The pitching options on tonight's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball aren't the guys we typically turn to within our FanDuel lineups. There are a lot of second-tier guys. Maybe they're in the value play discussion at times, but in general, not like the mainstays, the stalwarts within our lineups. And that can be tough, but I think the thing, the fun thing about tonight is that there are a lot of unique factors that allow some of those second-tier guys to become better than what they typically are. And that, to me, provides some hope for tonight that we can lean on these guys who are not our typical guys we put in our lineups and feel pretty good about them still. We're going to break down what those factors are, who benefits from them, and how it impacts tonight's slate in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Here to break down tonight's eight-game main slate, with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. There are four weather notes across the eight games, so a bit of a messy slate. The first one is in New York for the Yankees and the Orioles. Slight chance of rain there. They should be okay to play, but I would check back on that later to see what the timeline of that rain is. At Wrigley Field, winds are blowing in from center at 16 miles per hour. It's also just 58 degrees, so if you were crafting the most perfect pitching conditions you could possibly concoct for tonight, they're going to take place at Wrigley Field, so upgrade pitchers big time uh, for the Cubs and the Mets. Those two pitchers are Marcus Stroman and Kode Senga. There is a chance of thunderstorms in Kansas City for the Royals and the Tigers. I check back on the timing of those, but they should be good to go there. And finally, there is a slight chance of rain in Denver for the Rockies and Marlins. Again, they should be okay to play, but check back on that later. So no real risky games in terms of postponements, I don't think. But I would check back on them later. And the big weather takeaway is uh, wind in and low temperatures in Wrigley Field, which is fantastic for pitching. We'll talk about the implications of that and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. Our PGA DFS breakdown of the Charles Schwab Challenge is now up, breaking down our top golfers in each salary tier over at FanDuel.com via myself and Brandon Gadula. Get that by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. And if you like what you hear, Leave us a five-star rating as well. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only, $10 deposit required, Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9 with it. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Wednesday main slate. Bryce Miller comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel at 10-9. That may sound odd, but he's facing the A's, so that's why he's up there. James Paxton comes in at 10-4, followed by Bryce Elder against the Dodgers at 10-1. Marcus Stroman and Kode Senga both in that win. Stroman, 99. Senga, 96. Tyler Wells is 94, with Tony Gonsolin at 9,000. Sandy Alcantara at Coors Field and Nestor Cortez are the other guys at $8,000 or higher for today. Now, I mentioned the weather Wrigley Field, and that's fantastic for pitching. That's great for Stroman, but it's also great for Senga. And if I run my strikeout projections without factoring in the wind, Kode Senga has the highest projected strikeout number on this slate. So a lot of strikeouts, perfect weather for pitching. Kode Senga will be our top pitcher for today at $9,600. And we did see Senga get pushed back. He was supposed to start last night, and you can get some concern from guys being pushed back, but... The Mets said they did that to keep Senga on extra rest. He's had extra rest for every start so far this year. And that tells me that it's not an injury. And 
I feel good about him as a result of that. He is facing the Cubs, uh, benefiting from that wind at Wrigley Field, plus the cool temperatures. Senga is still walking too many guys with a 14% walk rate thus far. And as we saw last night with Mackenzie Gore, walks will haunt. The other parts of the profile are good for Senga, though. He has a 29% strikeout rate that is uh, buoyed by a 12 strikeout outing last time out. But he's had seven plus strikeouts in five of his eight starts, and he had six in one of the non seven strikeout starts. So it's not just one star juicing up the numbers for Senga. We, he's had plus matches before, uh, and he's taken advantage of those. So you could downgrade the numbers a bit there. But the 12 strikeout game came against the Rays. He's facing the Cubs here. They've gotten off to a good start against righties. Got some guys who have had phenomenal, uh, you know, seasons, but also the past couple weeks. 107 WRC plus for the Cubs, 23% strikeout rate, not actively seeking this team out for any reason, but it's a guy who gets strikeouts, pitching in good weather for pitching on a slate that's lacking in top end starters. I've got Senga projected for 6.9 strikeouts here. That's more than enough for me to be very high in him here. So he gets a boost up because of the wind, but I'd probably be on Senga regardless just because um, it's a low strikeout slate and he is one of the exceptions who can rack them up. The number two option is going to benefit from a matchup. And I typically try really hard not to oversell a matchup in DFS because you need the pitcher to get strikeouts too. And they're pretty, pretty big factor in that equation. But Bryce Miller, I think, is, is benefiting enough from his matchup to be the number two option behind Senga for tonight. And he's had a great start to his big league career. Um, but I'm still pretty skeptical in large part because the peripherals are more just okay. I'm just not sure if the regression will come tonight based on the matchup that he has with this A's team. The matchup, as mentioned, is the main driver here. The A's have a 90 WRC plus against righties with a 25% strikeout rate. The strikeout rate is the part of Miller that I have the hardest time believing. He does have a 25% strikeout rate across his first four starts, but his swing and strike rate is 9.1%, much lower. And he did get strikeouts in double A last year, but that's double A, and it's a big jump up to the majors. And a lot of the strikeout rate for Miller comes from just one start. So low swing and strike rate, the strikeout rate overall juiced up by one start. The problem with disqualifying it for that reason is that that one start came against the A's and it came back on May 2nd, which is long enough ago where I don't care too much about familiarity here. The Mariners did let Miller stretch himself out last time out. He went 102 pitches, so I'd expect to be closer to 90 or so going forward, but it is helpful to know if he has an inefficient inning or two, he can still potentially get us that quality start bonus. I will like to be off this train soon for Miller because I think that regression will come, but not sure it'll be tonight. So at least for right now, I do think Miller works here at $10,900. We'll talk about um, some other pitchers you could turn to in things to watch because if you can't tell, I'm a little skeptical of Miller, but going here due to the matchup, I think there are other options to pivot to if you also are skeptical of him. We'll go through those later on. But first, let's talk about our value play. And among the value plays, the only one I think is worth using is Sandy Alcantara. And for Senga, the main driver was weather. For Miller, the main driver is matchup. For Alcantara, the main driver is pitch count. And that's going to matter a lot for us in getting to Alcantara for tonight because he's at Coors Field, which is tough. And he still is not back to his old self. And I have not seen reasons to think he will be back there super, super soon. But he's still the best value option here because he goes so deep in games. Talk about that more in a second. But the matchup here with the Rockies does help. 89 at WRC plus against righties, low walk rate. So it's a good matchup for him. And Alcantara, even without having his best stuff, is still clearly like intelligent. You don't get to what he did last year without being intelligent. And that part of Alcantara is still there. He's working around not having his best stuff. He has nine strikeouts in three separate games so far this year. And it's a combination of that intelligence with the length he's given. He's gone 100 plus pitches in four consecutive starts, including 113 in one of them, which gives him plenty of leash, even when things aren't going perfect for him. I haven't seen a lot to suggest he's going to suddenly get out of this rough stretch, but he did change his pitch mix last time out. He used more four seam fastballs and fewer sinkers, and that game didn't go well for him. But that four seamer is a much higher whiff pitch for him than the sinker is. So it could happen. It could get better here pretty soon. It's not the most inspiring play, I don't think. But 
And there are plenty of downsides here, but I'm still fine with it. So I think Alcantara does work here as the top value, 89. Maybe the fact that my light bulb is currently like about to expire and it sounds like I'm in a like, torture chamber. Maybe that means it's a bad omen for Alcantara, but um, I still think I want to go there. If you're watching YouTube, you can see my light flickering. It's because I'm in a torture chamber, apparently. Bad omen maybe for Sandy Alcantara, but outside of that, I do think he is a quality play for today. Let's dig in now to the stacks. I think the stacks are a bit easier for today than the pitching options are. And unfortunately, based on what happened last night, we're going back to the same place as we were for a third consecutive night. The Mariners and Marlins have both been in play each of the first two slates so far this week. And I think they are again for tonight. I think the Mariners are the preferred team here. So we'll start with them and then get to the Marlins. And the, the Mariners were good on Monday, just not as, as good last night. The main draw for the Marlins is that they're, or the Mariners, that they're facing the A's. So again, we get to face the A's bullpen, which is always a plus. And I think they should do well before they get to that bullpen also. They're facing Ken Waldachuk, who is off to a rough start this year. He has 6.85 ERA. His expected ERA is 6.26. And I think he's been trying to get more strikeouts recently, which is a good thing. He's been throwing more sliders to get there. And his strikeout rate is up a bit. But it's still just 19% this time. And his fly ball rate is 45% with a 40% hard hit rate. So even with the strikeouts up, we would still stack against that for sure. And we'd stack against it even if the bullpen behind him were better than what it currently is. The Mariners are going to have to be a focal point for us uh, just for one more night, given that they get to face Waldachuk, who's struggling, get to face this A's bullpen, which is struggling. I think it all adds up to make the A's, uh, the Mariners, I should say, a very good stack for today. The issue we ran into Monday, at least I did, when I was stacking is that a lot of the non-obvious guys blew up. Yeah, Jared, Jared Kelnick and lefty on lefty matchup. Jose Caballero, uh, he had a home run as well. And we get Waldachuk tonight, another lefty facing them. So I don't think it was like totally out of left field that Kelnick and Caballero were the guys who did well there because Kelnick has crushed lefties this year, even though he's a lefty, small sample, but it's, you know, good regardless. Caballero willing to run on lefties and seems to have more power against them too. So I'm not going to abandon like the traditional studs. I think that uh, Julio Rodriguez is like the top play on the slate for tonight. Um, it is a bit tougher to get to Teoscar Hernandez and AJ Pollock now that they're lower in the order. But I think you can have some level of faith in Kelnick and Caballero here as the guys who burned us, or at least me. I should say me. Maybe they didn't burn you. But the, the guys I should have included in my stack on Monday night and didn't do as well as I could have as a result of that. But Kelnick especially... Lefty on lefty, I don't think that bothers him too much. So Julio Rodriguez is the top play, but Kalnick definitely in that discussion as well. As for the Marlins, still at Coors Field. That is the only reason we are here uh, outside of the matchup. I, I would not stack this Marlins team. On the moon, maybe I might consider it. But outside of that, that's the only place I could potentially go to this offense because they're pretty rough. But if it's in Carl Kaufman and even... With a good matchup for Kaufman, I still think we should stack against him here. Kaufman made his debut last week, which was in Arlington against the Rangers. So not a course field, but still got knocked around. He let up five runs, four of which were earned in four and a third innings. He let up a 67% hard hit rate and two barrel balls. That was, I think, to be expected based on his minor league numbers. Down there, uh, Kaufman had a 15% strikeout rate with a 43% hard hit rate allowed. And sure, the matchup is easier for him this week because the Marlins are awful against righties, but it's now Coors Field and Kaufman was struggling against AAA hitters. Now, the Marlins are bad. I, I would say I don't think they're as bad as AAA batters. I don't think they are, but you know, you could put your joke in there if you wanted to, but I will go back to them here and it might be one of the final times this year I had to do so. Hopefully this is the last time because I'm sick of it, but I do think that they are a necessity for tonight regardless. I would say the one downside of stacking against the Rockies is that they've done a great job controlling the running game this year. They let up just 22 stolen bases with 18 runners caught stealing. That is a tremendous ratio. So if you're looking at this Marlins lineup, I would focus primarily on power when deciding which guys you want to use. So downgrade John Birdie against the righty, downgrade Garrett Hampson despite it being a revenge game, downgrade Gene Segura because their main appeal is their speed. And that's not going to be as big of a factor against this Rockies defense. And so I think that I would downgrade those guys. Brian De La Cruz is still fine. Yeah, he does steal, but he also has power. So he's fine. But the other guys do get a downgrade here because of how good uh, the Rockies have been controlling the running game. 
As for the third stack, I'm going to go a bit contrarian here. I like the Orioles a lot. They're facing Nestor Cortez, so there is risk here because Cortez is a good pitcher, but I think they are worth it. Cortez just letting up a lot of runs right now. He is still getting strikeouts, which is why this is risky, but he's got some really big batted ball issues. We've seen Cortez throwing more four-seamers his past six starts, and in that time, he has let up a 43% hard hit rate with a 58% fly ball rate. He let up three home runs in a single game in that stretch. Overall, his ERA is 6.68. He did get a lot better last time out, and he let up just three hard hit balls on 16 balls in play against the Blue Jays, which may mean he has gotten things turned around. But it's also just a one-start sample. He let up 10 hard hit balls to start before that. And the Orioles, I think right now, are better than the Blue Jays against lefties. They have a 123 WRC+, plus, which is the best number on the slate. They have a 190 ISO. It is a tremendous park for home runs. So it could go poorly because I respect Cortez as a pitcher, but all stacks can go poorly. That's kind of the nature of the beast with MLB DFS. And this one comes with upside. So I'll be on the Orioles for tournaments. I think they make a lot of sense. And they are a team, to me, that is worth taking the risk on for tonight. Now, one guy I might not be as high on in my Orioles stacks is Jorge Mateo. I typically loved him, but he's been in a slump. He has no extra base hits since May 6th and uh, only one so far this month. So been a rough stretch. He also has just four stolen bases this month. His hard hit rate in May is 28%. We also saw Mateo miss a game last week due to leg soreness. And I think that may be playing a role here, potentially in why he's been struggling. I'm probably going to take a break from including Mateo in stacks. I will keep a close eye on him because he is super, super fun with two sources of upside. But I want to see some signs of life with the stick before I buy back in. There are plenty of other guys in the stack who uh, look really good and grade out really well. So I'll probably focus primarily on them and then jump back on the Mateo train once he truly gives me a reason to do so. Things to watch for tonight, as mentioned, I'm not super, super sold on Bryce Miller. I think he's okay. I think he's the number two option, but one to get some more pivots. I think the primary one is James Paxton. They let him go super deep in last week's game, despite his injury concerns. Uh, the velocity for Paxton is the best it's been in a very long time. He's not getting whiffs, but he is getting strikeouts. He's facing the Angels for today. Um, it's not a great matchup, but his salary is 10-4. He's going to be low rostered, I would assume. And... I think he makes a lot of sense. I also am okay with Marcus Stroman in a revenge game here against the Mets at $9,900 at Wrigley Field um, in the wind. So I would say Paxton over Stroman as far as pivots off of Miller, but both those guys do great out well if you are looking to get off of Miller, whether it be because of roster rate, salary, whatever it may be. The Padres are facing Trevor Williams, who's done a great job with contact suppression so far this year, which has kept his ERA pretty reasonable, but very few strikeouts, minimal ground balls. That's a formula we can stack against. The Padres fully on the table for stacking. And I think that if we're looking at a cash game option, the Padres are a better cash game option than the Orioles are tonight against Nestor Cortez. Similar line of thought here at the Red Sox facing Tyler Anderson. He is, like Williams, doing a great job with contact suppression, which is why I have the Orioles higher on my tournament list. But Anderson's still not back to what he was doing last year. I prefer the Red Sox against a righty. And Anderson's a lefty, but they do work here. So to me, I like the Mariners a lot, like the Marlins a lot, then going Orioles for tournaments, Padres and Red Sox, other teams to consider for stacking for today. Let's finish up here with the Dinger calls. And I'm going to go with the, I don't think I've done this. I think I've done this call once so far this year, but we're doing a double down call for the home run calls. The boring one, Julio Rodriguez. His home run odds are actually kind of long for tonight, which makes sense. He's had seven home runs so far this year. It's not a huge number. And Seattle is also not a tremendous place for home runs. But I was looking into Rodriguez, wondering why the home runs had not been there. So looking into his uh, his game logs and looking at his uh, his stat cast data across the past two weeks, I think he has four barrels and a 65% hard hit rate. Despite that, you can find Rodriguez to hit a home run as long as plus 525 in some spots. I'm not sure why he's plus 360 at FanDuel. I think that makes more sense personally, uh, but he's facing Walt the Chuck who does struggle with hard contact. He does let up a lot of balls in play, then gets to face the A's bullpen. So Julio Rodriguez, double dong for tonight. The boring, I'm going to call maybe the double dong aspect makes it fun. I don't know. Either way, 
We're going to Julio Rodriguez as a top one. The fun one, I'm going to go Austin Hayes. Hayes, similar to Rodriguez, not a lot of home runs so far this year, but his barrel rate's pretty good. He's playing at Yankee Stadium, which is always a plus for dingers. Tends to hit towards the top of the lineup against lefties. So I like that quite a bit. Hayes, uh, plus 520 at FanDuel Sportsbook to go deep. You can get six uh, at some spots. So as always, make sure you shop around. But we're going to go Julio Rodriguez twice and Austin Hayes once as the home run calls for today here on the solo shot. That is all that we got here for today. As a reminder, don't forget to check out the PGA DFS podcast with Brandon Gadula breaking down the Charles Schwab Challenge. Get that wherever you get your podcasts. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. And also, make sure you follow the podcast. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the thumbs up button there. We appreciate you as always. And hit subscribe over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.